Welcome to Rective Education US. In this video, I am going to discuss about the derivation of transmission line equations in different final forms in terms of source parameters and receiver parameters. So initially, let me explain you what are transmission lines. Basically, I can define a transmission line like this. It's a medium or simply I can say that it's the way, path or the medium that is responsible for the travel of the signal through it from source to receiver. Okay. Now, if you take the simple example in our house, we have got a plug and we have got a TV. So, the plug will be our source. Source will be a plug and receiver is our TV sets, television sets. Okay. So, the signal is carried from the plug to the TV through a transmission line. Similarly, from the antenna to the TV, the signal is carried away with the help of a transmission line. So, it is a, it's a form of a coaxial cable. So, in, in a broader sense, I can define a transmission line as a medium which allows the propagation of the electromagnetic signal from source to the receiver. Now, let me explain you the different types of transmission lines. So, basically in olden days, we used to have a two wire transmission line. The first and foremost used transmission line is a two wire or a twin cable transmission line. After that came the coaxial cables which are now in use. Next, our next type of transmission lines which are in use are the optical fiber cables. And finally, we have got waveguides. Okay. Now, let me describe each and every transmission line. Now, this two wire transmission line is generally useful up to a frequency of around 10 megahertz. So, if the frequency is as low as 10 megahertz, we can use a two wire transmission line. The structure of a two wire transmission line will be like this. So, we, uh, we have got a sheet, we have got a covering material or a sheet between the two wires of a transmission line and in between we have got a the middle one is a copper wire so this is one trans one uh, wire and this is the second wire and in between we have got a dielectric sheet or a covering okay so this is the dielectric sheet or covering okay now uh, what are the main advantages of this two wire or twin cable transmission line is that it's very very cost effective it's very cheap to manufacture and it is very useful in the frequency range of 0 hertz to 10 megahertz now what about uh, what about the frequencies more than 10 megahertz if i am using the same two wire transmission line uh, for frequencies more than 10 kilohertz what, 10 megahertz sorry uh, what happens is its attenuation is more. So, the losses in the signal starts creeping up and so finally, for uh, higher frequencies, the signal gets totally attenuated. So, the for small frequencies or low frequencies, uh, these two wire transmission lines is a very effective way of transmitting the signals. But for, for higher frequencies, more than 10 megahertz, it's not at all useful. Now, let me explain you the coaxial cable. Now, if you, if you, uh, throw some light on the constructional features of a coaxial cable. Basically, we have got an inner conductor. Basically, we have got an inner conductor and over the inner conductor, we have got a dielectric coating, generally which is a white one, white dielectric coating and over this white dielectric coating, a second conductor is there present in the form of a mesh. Okay. So, this is a mesh conductor so the second conductor is uh, generally in the form of a mesh so if you if you uh, open the cross section of a 
to a coaxial cable you are going to find a middle inner conductor which is a uh, thick copper wire over the copper wire you will be finding you will be having a white colored dielectric material generally it is of plastic or uh, something like a nylon material or a rubber material sometimes and over it we have got a another uh, mesh which is surrounding the inner conductor and over this surrounding mesh we have got a outer conductor so this outer uh, sorry outer dielectric so the outer dielectric is will be giving the physical strength or physical support to the inner uh, to inner two conductors so uh, this outer con outer uh, conduct outer dielectric coating will act as, will act as a protective layer also so that will give you the, give the mechanical strength for the coaxial cable now this is the constructional features of, these are the constructional features of our coaxial cable now coming to the technicalities of the coaxial cable we can use the coaxial cables up to the frequencies of uh, roughly around 300 to 400 megahertz that means slightly slightly uh, more bandwidth can be obtained we can by using a coaxial cable now uh, after 400 megahertz what happens is skin effect comes into picture so due to the skin effect uh, all the signal that is being transmitted through the uh, coaxial cable starts slowly degrading in quality and getting attenuated so as the signal passes on through the coaxial cable uh, for a frequency is more than 400 megahertz attenuation losses will be starting to be more prevalent and propagation slowly stops through the coaxial cable so for frequencies more than 400 megahertz the coaxial cable is no more useful and this coaxial cable is very much effectively useful up to the frequencies of 400 400 megahertz and uh, apart from the advantage of uh, passing the signals up to 400 megahertz it is also cost effective so that means uh, compared to the wave guides and optical fibers this is a cheaper method uh, the coaxial cable is a cheaper method of signal transmission so where we generally obtain this uh, coaxial cables or where we use them is in the TV transmission in our day-to-day -day life so if you have for example from the dish antenna to the TV set that's uh, the uh, that is connected is nothing but the coaxial cable so coaxial cable is useful generally in probes so we give use them in probes okay so probes connecting the CROs and uh, the uh, TV transmission and reception okay TV reception etc okay next coming to the next one which is OFC that is the optical fiber so optical fiber cables are very much useful for higher data rates so the coaxial cables are not at all useful for higher data rates which are prevalent in the present day scenario now if you take the present day data rates we are up to around 1 gbps that is 1 gigabits per second so the coaxial cables will not cater or will not allow such a large data rate of the order of 1 gigabits per second so for faster data rate to uh, in order to be compatible for the this much amount of faster data rates we go for optical fiber cables now what is the construction of an optical fiber cable we have got a core and a clad material so we have got a core and a clad material so what is core the inner inner uh, cylindrical material which we use along the length of the optical fiber is nothing but the core material and over it we give a coating of the clad material so this is a simple construction of a uh, coaxial cable so the outer outer coating is called as cladding material and the inner one inner material we use is the core material so the main uh, principle here is n1 e, n1 is the refractive index of the core material and n2 is the refractive index of the clad material then n1 should be greater than n2 that means the refractive index of the core material should always be more than the refractive index of the clad material so uh, the main advantage of the optical fiber cable is that it is allow uh, it allows a faster data rate of the order of 1 gigabits per second and apart from that it is very very cheaper okay uh, now coming to the disadvantages of this optical fiber cable we we often it is prone to the bending losses okay 
that means whenever there is small bend formed it is a permanent bend that means we cannot uh, we say we cannot take back the bend so that's in why always the while the while commissioning or laying the optical fiber cable we need to go for a lot of lot of amount of caution so we need to lay the optical fiber cables with utmost caution because once there is a bend formed it is a permanent one and we cannot change it properly to, to its original position so due to because uh, we, the signal is propagated in the form of light through the optical fiber cable and whenever there is a bend formed the, the, the propagation of light becomes difficult so for that reason whenever there is a bend formed in the optical fiber cable it, it will attenuate the signal and the signal no more propagates through the optical fiber cable when there is a bent formed. So uh, always we need to exercise a caution while we are uh, installing or laying a optical fiber network. Okay. And the fourth one is the waveguides. Now why we, uh, what are the main advantages of the waveguides is the accuracy and accuracy and the signal quality. Okay the signal quality and accuracy are very very uh, appreciable in the case of waveguides now if we go for military uh, applications wherein there is a requirement of zero attenuation we go for waveguides so the structure of a waveguide would be like this it is a cylindrical or sometimes a hollow cuboidal structure like this the inner, the inner walls of this cuboidal structure are coated with highly conductive materials like silver or copper. So the inner walls of this uh, cylindrical or the cuboidal structure are generally coated with silver or copper uh, materials because they give, uh, they give high quality signal and attenuation is almost zero in the case of a waveguide in microwave frequency ranges. So uh, the optical fiber cables are no doubt operable in microwave frequency range but, the, but uh, once a bend is formed it will give a permanent damage. So uh, if you take a waveguide, so even though it, it is a very rugged structure and a robust structure. So the waveguide is a very robust structure and uh, there is no formation of a bend at all. So due to that uh, there is no chance of a bending losses for possible in the case of a waveguide and apart from that the attenuation is zero because it's almost considered to be zero in the case of a waveguide and so there is a faithful transmission so we have a faithful transmission of signal through the waveguide so there is no chance of deceiving okay so we say that there is a faithful transmission possible in the waveguides unlike in the case of optical fiber cable that means we cannot get deceived by the waveguides always the propagation is possible 100 percent but the only thing is that the negative point about waveguides is that uh, it is very expensive that means a meter of a waveguide costs uh, us something like 4000 or 5000 rupees so since it is very expensive wherever it's present wherever it is required compulsory mandatorily there only we are going to use so for generally we use them in either ATCs that is air traffic controllers or uh, radars or military applications so uh, we, we generally use waveguides in uh, the radars and radar sections and ATCs and of course in satellite communications okay so this is an overview about what are transmission lines and the different types of transmission lines Next, uh, let me explain you about the uh, elements, uh, the structure of a transmission, basic structure of a transmission line. Now, transmission line is a distributed element. Transmission line is a distributed element means uh, we have got four uh, passive elements in our electro electric circuits namely R, L, C and G. R stands for the resistance, L for the inductance, C for the capacitance and G for the conductance. So uh, of these four, R and L, these are series elements. Why? Because they are measured in ohms. Okay. And uh, R and L are measured in ohms. And coming to C and G, these two are measured in mo. So the inverse of uh, uh, R and L will be your mo. So 
G and C are considered to be parallel elements and R and L are considered to be the series elements. Now, uh, why these are considered parallel elements, I need to explain you. What is the induct what is the uh, reactance of a capacitor? It is 1 by J omega C. And what is the resistance? What is the conductance actually? Conductance as well, I can write it as 1 by R. So, if you observe this uh, addition of these two num these two numbers, complex numbers, I can I can uh, make assume it in the similar similar form of 1 by Z1 plus 1 by Z2, where Z1 is J omega C and Z2 is R. Okay, so I uh, I can say that since they are edi editing editing with their reciprocals, uh, this formula uh, I can as well say it as these uh, these are considered to be parallel. What are considered to be parallel? Z1 and Z2 are considered to be parallel. That means what is Z1 C? What is Z2 R? So uh, I mean uh, here it is. I can write it as uh, G here. Okay, so uh, C and G are considered to be in parallel. So C and G are parallel elements. And coming to R R and L, uh, what is the inductance offered by, uh, what is the uh, what, uh, reactance offered by L, J omega L and what is R, I can write it directly R. So R plus J omega L is the impedance offered by R and L. So since they are directly written, returned, so it is, uh, uh, so I can, from this formula I can say that the equivalent impedance is the series combination of R and L. Here it is the parallel combination of C and G. So since we, are, we get the parallel combination of C and G, they are parallel elements and here these two are L and R are series elements. Okay, so this point is very very important because based on this concept we are going to derive the transmission line equations. Now, uh, the, how, what is the distributed element is the four uh, parameters or four uh, passive elements RLCG are distributed over the length of the transmission line. That means how are they assumed along the transmission line? Now let me say this is one meter of the transmission line for us. This is one meter of the transmission line. And so what we say is some po small portion of it is R, the next portion of it is L, the next portion of it is C and the next portion of it is G. Okay, now let me say this total element is some uh, 10 centimeters and this is 100 uh, centimeters or 1 meter. So, in total, the same cycle of this RLCG will be repeated 10 times, 10, will be repeated for 10 cycles along the length of the transmission line to get a total length of 1 meter. What I mean to say is, if I am taking the four elements uh, as for one cycle as 10 centimeters, that means uh, for every 2.5 centimeters it is R, for every 2.5 centimeters it is L, for every 2.5 centimeters it is C, and the next 2.5 centimeters it is G. So this cycle of RLCG will be totally constituting a length of 10 centimeters. So out uh, these 10 centimeters cycles made in 10 cycles will form one meter. So what I can say the to the elements R, L, C, and G they are not uh, separated physically they are they are put together so they are, i can say that the elements are distributed over the length of the transmission line since the rlcg elements are distributed over the length of the transmission line i can say that it is a distributed element so transmission line is a distributed element that point you should keep it in mind now let me explain you the equivalent circuit of the transmission line now uh, since I told you just now, R and L are series elements and G and C are parallel elements. So, in one unit uh, length of a transmission line, this is the order or this is the arrangement of the elements R, L, C and G in a unit length of the transmission line. Okay, so this is C. So, uh, with this we have uh, completed the basics of the transmission lines and in the next session we will discuss about uh, the transmission line equations. Thank you for watching this video. If you find that it is informative, please subscribe our channel REC TV Education.